What's up, loves and bros? Today we're going to be reviewing Mia Culpa. The movie came out a couple of days ago, and I'm just here to give you my opinion on it. So this movie stars Kelly Rowland and the very handsome Trevante Rhodes. I give the movie a 5 out of 10. It wasn't giving at all. This is It wasn't giving anything. It's giving Tyler Perry's temptation. It's giving obsession. Um, it's just a really played out narrative of the cheating spouse. And it played on a lot of tropes that are prevalent in the black community. I wouldn't even say that this is a fair and accurate representation of the black community, but it plays on the fears and the tropes the black community has of the strong black woman and who needs to be made submissive by a strong, commanding black man, not her light-skinned babe. It plays on the idea that a man without a job is not a man worthy of respect, and I didn't like that at all. I also didn't like the light skin versus dark skin, even though it was men. I didn't like how Kelly Rowland's husband and his brother were both married to dark skin women and were both one was in a seemingly abusive and controlling relationship while the other one was disenfranchised because he didn't have a job just for a dark skinned man to command his wife a couple of times and then get into her drawers. That was what? It also paints black love as something not only transactional but temporary built on lust and passion versus similar values and friendship. I just didn't think the movie was developed enough. There were so many questions and so many um, important parts that could have been played on, like the way that the mom ended up not having cancer and the brother is like some evil uh, guy who is setting up this man for his own wife cheating. <laughs> his own wife cheating like they could have really played into that more like I don't really understand the parts that they focused on versus the parts that they should have focused on they should have really delved deep into the mother's relationship with the sons um but that message wasn't really passing through the message I really got from the beginning was that Kelly Rowland is just some character who always prioritizes her work over her family And at even a time when the mom is supposed to be dying of cancer, she just seems to have no empathy for her. Even though, I mean, in the end it was justified. But as the movie, like, develops, it just seems like she's a B-I-T-C-H in a way. But this is supposed to be a short review. Let me know what you guys thought of the movie. Leave your thoughts, your comments, and make sure to like the video. Thank you for watching. I want to know, why do y'all watch Tyler Perry and think that y'all not going to get Tyler Perry? He going to parry every time. He's been doing it for years. I knew exactly what I was getting watching this movie, Medea Copa. Like, did y'all think y'all was getting Tyler Perry air water, Tyler Perry winkle? Because I knew I wasn't. At this point, I'm just happy that Kelly Rowland and Trevante in another movie and that Kelly brought her own wigs. But what really makes me mad is that the movie started off actually okay, but then it just went to hell. And once it went to hell, it never got to heaven. I knew once we found out that the husband was broke that we were in Tyler Perry land because every husband is always broke in all of his movies. And of course, they ain't counseling because they got marriage issues. Poppy Chulo was seen with his best friend holding hands at the coffee shop and she light-skinned, of course. And then I was happy to see Mississippi, but then I got mad because where is P-Valley season three? Hurry up. Like, how is jail, Mississippi, since you want to take forever and say goodbye to the whole Mississippi mass choir before you got your kids and left Derek? But also, I'm so tired of Shannon Thornton being a damsel in distress on my TV. Like, can she be a queen for once? Can she be powerful? I'm so tired of her getting slapped around. Anyways, the mama, Miss Hocus Pocus, pissed me off the whole movie. At the dinner table, she really said, I see why my son used to like Jenna so much. I wish she was my daughter-in-law. I would have told her, you can have your broke son back and Lil Jordan Sparks as your daughter-in-law. Every time Poppy Chulo has something to say, I said, shut up, because you are doing the nay-nay and the Dougie and the unemployment line. You can't tell me nothing. Until you get yourself together, Kyle, you can't tell me what to work, how to work, when to work, or where to work. If I want to work, 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 like Rihanna, I can. If I want to put my thing down, flip it, and reverse it, I can, because you can't. And then have the nerve to sell me a piano to get his mama a G-Shock for her birthday. He gonna say, why you tripping? I can get you another one. How you gonna give me another one and you didn't have no money to get the watts? That's why you sold my piano. I don't care if I played the piano or the piano played me. It's my piano. And what if I seen Alicia Keys crack on the Super Bowl and I want to play the piano now? I keep irritating me so much. When he came in the bathroom and talked about I want to get back to how we was in our honeymoon, get back to a job. Like the only get back you should be trying to get is get your lick back. That's about it. Get your money back.
Like, when she pulled them bills out after he told her that she couldn't take that case, I said, thank you. I pay this bill. I pay this bill. I pay this bill. I don't have time to pay you attention because I pay enough already. And then he kept tattletelling to the mama and the brother, like, ain't we grown? The mama came over there talking about, yeah, we have a say-so on what you can and cannot do. No, you have chemotherapy to do. That's what you need to focus on. See, that couldn't be my mother-in-law because I would have ate her up every time Mia was too nice for me. Like, I don't care if your brother is running for mayor or McDonald's employee of the month. I'm going to do what I have to do because you have no money. And now I'm going to do it even more. Now, let's get into what we all came to see. The main attraction here. I knew she was going to sleep with him once he said, unlock your phone and put my number in. I said, what kind of client is this? He had her shook like a vibrator since day one. The confidence was too much for her. Like, I knew she was going to fold like a lawn chair. But the thing that got me the most was that he's on trial for allegedly murdering a woman. And all he cared about was murdering Mia's cat. And Mia's so down bad because she's still sleeping with this man and don't even know if he's innocent. They talk about they found the skull fragments of the girl inside his painting and she still let him crack her skull open. I've never seen sexy gaslighting before. He said, everything in your body says that you're attracted to me, but you won't admit it. So I don't trust you. I need a new lawyer. Like what? But I was mad because it kind of makes sense. You're my lawyer and you're supposed to tell me the truth because you want me to tell you the truth and you're not telling me the truth. So I get it. It's just weird. I'm not on trial to sleep with you. This is not porn hub. I low-key can't even blame her for sleeping with him because his mouthpiece and game is crazy. He was saying some things. Mia knew from the police report. The police report said that he liked to pull my hair, make me gag, spit on me, bite my nipples. Deep was never deep enough for him. I said, oh yeah, she want that. But it's also Jimmy fault for sending her that picture with false information. She also was just looking for a reason to sleep with that man, to be honest. But the movie went downhill for me when Tyler Perry started being a freaky frog. That whole circuit party and all that, I'm like, here we go. First of all, I know Zaire heard Mia click clacking behind him in them hills like she was Cinderella. She was not quiet at all. But the part that really bothered me was she went back the next day. He tried to kiss her on the neck. She said no. And then a prostitute comes out of nowhere. Like what? Like what kind of freaky frog fantasy is this Tyler Perry? Then he starts getting head while she's leaving and she gets on the elevator to leave and she's stuck and got to watch him getting head. And in my head, I'll be like, are these based on true events? Like, Tyler Perry, are you locking elevators? Like, let me know now. Like, let me find out you was responsible for the elevator with Beyonce, Jay-Z, and Solange. But this is the part that made no sense to me. She went downstairs, found out about the Winston Hotel, and goes back upstairs to the man with a prostitute. The girl leaves, and she don't even put no hand sanitizer on his penis. She just gets on it. Like, what? You don't know what diseases that girl got. You are not even gonna clean it off. You just gonna get on it. Disgusting. And then the sex scene with the paint was giving blendy pens. And I'm like, please, y'all don't start trying to have sex with paint because it's not going to work that way. I said, what in the hell is this freaky paint and sip? Tyler Perry, please. Is this what y'all do in Atlanta? Then she wake up with a painted portrait above the bed. I said, this is too much. The painting and gesture was nice. I was thinking like, hmm, I want somebody to paint me and put it above my head. But then when I found out he did it for everybody else, I'm like, uh-uh, here we go. After that, I was just over it. She went to talk to Renee and she talked about, yeah, he's a snake. I'm like, well, you like that snake, Medusa. The way her and Mia had the exact same Zaire experience had me in tears. Then she go to Zaire's house and start ripping the paintings down from above the bed. And it's Brenda, Letitia, Linda, Felicia. It was just too much. Then she go to the house and the whole family there. And I was confused on how they even found out that her and Zaire slept together. Then Cal tell them that he ain't got no job and he been lying this whole time because she been financing him and the mama like, oh, it's her fault. Like, what? Then she go for a vacation to the Dominican Republic and find Heidi, the girl that's supposed to be dead. I'm like, this storyline is crazy. And then from here, I was really over it because why is Heidi in the DR out of all places? Then she run away, spray Windex in her eyes like, please, y'all. Then we never hear from her again. Like, that was it? That's all we get from her? Then I was confused on why she even called Ray when she could have handled the problem by herself. Why are you calling your op? Then she really goes home when he tells her to go home. I said, this movie dumb, like it's dumb as hell. Because now all of a sudden in the last 10 minutes, it's a horror film and she trying to get killed and the mama never had cancer and she running down the street like it's get out. It was just dumb. Then she run down the street, get in the car with Kyle. He called 911 and then 911 called him back. When does 911 call back? Then she crashed the car. He fly out the car and she not dead. Boo, tomato, tomato. Then he get out of jail. We didn't even get to see the trial. And then she show up looking like Mary J. Blige not going to cry. Then the movie ended and there was so many open storylines. Why did the family want Zaire so bad? When did Charlize sleep with Zaire? They never said that. And if Jimmy is a private investigator, why he didn't know that this family was a fraud? And then part of me felt like Jimmy had a love interest in Mia too, but they never explored that either. It was just so many opportunities that they missed. I was just irritated by the end. I was just like, okay, turn this off. But shout out to Kelly, Trevante, and Shannon Thornton for getting the movie. Tyler Perry, you have way too much money to be writing the same story and not getting no writers and new producers. I'm sorry. We're tired. You're killing us. This message is for Tyler Perry. If you are not Tyler Perry, you can continue to scroll. Listen to me, sir. Put your pen down. Put your pen and paper away. Okay? I am a good 20, 25 minutes into this movie, sir. And you're making my Agent Orange act up. Like, I'm itchy. Okay, I the mama, 
would have got a head rock. Do you? Matter of fact, matter of fact, I would have just turned around and left. Okay, but but the the disrespect when Kelly said, "Pick a bill, pick a bill, and then you can tell me what I can and can't do." Because what? What are you talking about, sir? You don't want me to take on this case and you're not bringing in any funds, any ducats, any cabbage, any green, any income. See, Tyler, don't piss me off, okay? And and, and I'm 20 minutes in and that's what is happening. I know you wrote it like that and then you want to sprinkle the mama with a detrimental disease that makes us feel some type. Uh uh-uh, no ma'am. No, I might as well go ahead and send you to an early grave, okay? I, I'm not playing around already. Tyler Laverne Perry needs to go to prison immediately. He he has committed too many crimes against humanity. But that Mia Copa movie that I just sat through and watched for an hour and a half was the biggest crime against humanity because he got the beautiful and talented Kelly Rowland out of her house, out of her house to do whatever that was. It, it was so offensive to watch that I had to Google. I had to Google everything about him. I didn't. I never even knew that he was born in Louisiana and had an abusive father until right now because I Google everything about him while I sat on the toilet to collect my thoughts. I also didn't know that he was a Virgo. That movie was like if you had every single intrusive thought and you just threw it into a script. It was so insane. It was so insane. I felt like I was on drugs the entire time. He must pay. The wigs, this is far more offensive than any other wigs he has ever put on a human being. Please, immediately, jail.